Hi third graders, my name is Shelby and I'm from Partnership for Kids. I am so glad that you're all at school today because it is so important to be at school when you are healthy. Um, if you're having some trouble getting up in the morning or getting to school on time, I do have some tips for you. My first tip is to use an alarm clock and to get up at the same time every school day. Get, uh, using an alarm clock will help you get up on time, it'll help you get moving, and if you, you set multiple alarms, that'll also help you get up. That's what I do because sometimes I don't wake up on my first alarm. And another one that I have for you is to do as much as you can the night before. So this means packing your lunch the night before, packing your backpack the night before, and then picking out your clothes the night before. This will help you that so if maybe one day you oversleep, you wake up and you don't have to do all of these things in the morning. And you can get them all, you can just grab them all and go to school and be there on time. So our theme today is mindfulness. And mindfulness means paying attention and slowing down to really notice what you're doing. It's important to be able to stay calm when things don't go your way or in stressful moments. Sometimes it isn't easy to be mindful, but the more practice that you have, the easier it becomes. And so today we are going to be reading a book about mindfulness. And mindfulness is... A big part of mindfulness is being a calm kid, and that's what our book is really going to help us um, do today. So one way that I like to be a calm kid or like to calm myself down when I am in a stressful situation or if I feel really angry or frustrated, I like to go to a quiet place and I close my eyes and I take five big deep breaths and this really calms me down. I can go back to what I was doing before and I feel so much better and I just realize that it really works. So now we're going to read our book. It is called Fourth Grade Rats and it's by Jerry Spinelli. Spinelli? And I'm going to read the first two chapters of this, and then you will receive the book to take home with you, and then you can read the rest um, at home with somebody or with your teacher. All right, chapter one is called Rats Don't. First grade babies, second grade cats, third grade angels, fourth grade rats. It was the first recess of the first day of school. A mob of third graders had me and Joey Peterson backed up against the monkey bars. They were giving us the old chant. When they come to the word rats, they screamed it in our faces. Then they ran off laughing. I wish I was still in third grade, I said. Why, said Joey, so I could still be an angel. Not me, he climbed onto the first bar. I waited three years to be a rat. He climbed to the next bar, and now I am a rat. He climbed to the top bar. He shouted over the schoolyard, and proud of it. I started to climb. My sneaker slipped on a bar, and I went down instead of up. The first thing I landed on was my hand. My thumb got bent back, way back. Pain, I howled as loud as I could. It still hurt. I kicked the ground, the monkey bars, the, the nearest tree. My thumb still hurt, and so did my foot. Only one thing left to do, I cried. Joy's voice came down from the highest monkey bar. Rats, don't cry! The bell rang to end recess. I jogged, sniffling to the door. When I got there, Judy Billings was behind me. Like a miracle, the pain in my thumb disappeared. For me, there was no such thing as pain when Judy Billings was around. I loved her. I was... I was sure that any day she would start to love me back. In the meantime, she mostly ignored me. But I kept trying. Judy was in the other fourth grade class, so I didn't see too much of her. When I did, I figured I had to make the most of it. That's why I held the door open for her. She went through. As usual, she ignored me. I didn't care. For one second, she was inches away. Heaven was a trainload of those seconds. A little while later, during silent reading, a spider crawled onto Becky Hibble's book. Becky screamed and flipped her book into the air. The book landed on the floor. The spider landed in my lap. Next thing I know, I'm on my, on my desktop dan tap dancing and yelling, Get him off me! Get him off me! On the way to lunch, Joey's whisper came again, Rats don't get scared of spiders! We sat together in the lunchroom, just like last year, and we both brought our lunches from home, just like last year. We sat at our usual table. I opened my lunchbox. I was checking out my stuff when I heard Joey snickering. I looked up. He was wagging his head. His face was smirky. 
I looked around the lunchroom. What's funny? That, he said. He was pointing at my lunchbox. What's wrong with it? I said. Ain't that the same one you had last year? Yeah, so what? He snickered again. Look at it. I looked at it. So? What do you see? I see a lunchbox. What do you see? A Martian? He flips the cover down. Look at it. What's on it? All over it. I looked again. Elephants? He broke out laughing. He pounded the table. His face was red. I had never known I could make him so happy. He tried to talk a couple of times. What? What? But he kept cracking up. Finally, he slapped his hand over his eyes and got it out. What are they doing? The elephants? Yeah, yeah. They're flying. This time, I thought lunch would be over before we, he stopped laughing. Other kids were looking over. Gerald Willis, a sixth grader and a school bully, threw a french fry at Joey, but that didn't stop him. I unwrapped my sandwich. I didn't have all day. At long last, he kept a deep breath. He finally said, Right, flying elephants, big flapping ears doing yo-yos with their trunks? Some of them, I corrected him. Other ones have fishing poles. His cheeks bulged with laughing balls. But he swallowed them. Morton, he made himself serious. Don't you get it? Get what? Flying elephants on your lunchbox, man. That's little kid stuff. He picked up his paper bag. He wagged it in my face. This is what a rat brings his lunch in. I took a bite of my sandwich. What do I care? That's just it, man. You gotta care. He opened his bag. If you don't care, who will? Your mom probably got you that box, right? Yeah, I guess. Right. Moms. They just want to keep you a baby all your life. Suds, I'm telling you. You gotta put a stop to it now. If you leave it up to your mom, you'll be going off to college with a flying elephant lunchbox. I looked at my lunchbox. It had, I'd had it since first grade. When I was a baby and glad of it, most of the other kids broke their lunchboxes or lost them, so they got new ones every year. My lunchbox just kept rolling on. The elephants were fading, and some were even starting to look like hippos. But I loved my lunchbox. It was like a brother to me. Now that I thought about it, it wasn't e I wasn't even sure I could eat lunch at school without it. And as for my lunchbox going off to college with me someday, well, to tell you the truth, I didn't see anything so bad about it. I looked at Joey. He was wagging his head and smirking again. Uh-oh, I thought. It's not just the lunchbox. Chapter 2. Real Meat Okay, I said. Now what? He pointed. That. My sandwich? You gonna eat peanut butter and jelly all your life? Why not? I said. I like it. I took another bite. He sneered. Yeah, right. I can see it now. You're in this big fancy restaurant with all these fancy big shop business people and everybody orders their dinners and the waitresses come to you and you go, duh, I'll have the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, please. Right, Morton. They're really going to be impressed. So what am I supposed to be eating? He said his sandwich on the, he laid his sandwich on the table. He opened it up. Bologna. Meat, Morton. Meat. I eat meat, I told him. Real meat, Morton? Ever eat a steak? I thought about it. I don't know, maybe once. Ever eat a pork chop, a roast beef, a roast beef, a liver? I put my sandwich down. You're ruining my lunch. He looked proud. I ate a bite of liver last night. You're lying. Swear to God. You didn't get sick? Nope. How'd it taste? I shuddered at the thought. He made a face. Terrible. Terrible? So why'd you eat it? You're stupider than I thought. Not as stupid as wanting to be an angel baby all my life. You want to grow up, you gotta eat stuff you don't like. And I'll tell you something else. He leaned across the table, getting real serious. It's an idea of mine. The worse it tastes, the faster you grow up. Now it was my turn to laugh. <laughs> yeah, right, Peterson. All I gotta do is go find a dead skunk and eat it and poof, I'll be 30 years old. He slapped his sandwich back together and took a chomp out of it. Forget it, man. You want to be a baby? Go be a baby. He went on chomping. I didn't feel like having a fight. 
I said, okay, maybe I'll ask my mom to make me a bologna sandwich one of these days. I don't care, he shrugged. Say, I said, where does bologna come from anyway? I was trying to picture herds of bolognis roaming around on ranches. I never got an answer. The bell rang. We packed up our lunches. We didn't even get to eat most of them. As we headed out, I wondered if anybody was looking at my lunchbox. At the door, we bumped into Miss Mrs. Sims. She was my third grade teacher. I really liked her. She never exactly said so, but I think I was her favorite student. I hadn't seen her since school ended back in June. Suds Morton, she went out. How's my big fourth grader? She held out her arms. One thing about Mrs. Sims, she gets physical. If she decides she wants to hug you, there's not much you can do. So I just walked into those arms and let them wrap around me. How are they treating you up there? She said. Well, the teacher's okay, I said. She backed off. She looked at me. You mean something's not okay? I felt squirmy. Well, it's not as much fun being a rat. At first, she didn't understand. Then she got a big smile. Now don't be so glum. Before you know it, fourth grade will be over and you'll be a... Uh, what's fifth grade? Monkeys, I told her. Of course, monkeys. You'll be a monkey. She hugged me again. She whispered, and don't forget, you'll always be an angel to me. She laughed and sent me on my way. In the hallway, I felt a hand on top of my head. Was Mrs. Simmons following me again? I turned. It was Gerald Willis, who was born a rat. His lips were puckered. They were making kissy noises at me. Ooh, little sudsy, my little teacher's pet. Where's my apple? Didn't you bring me an apple today? Before I could do anything, he swiped at my lunchbox. The cover sprang open and everything fell to the floor. My half-eaten peanut butter and jelly sandwich, my pack of pretzels, my cupcake, and my apple. I scrambled after the stuff on my hands and knees. Kids' feet were everywhere. Somebody crunched my pretzels. As I reached down for the apple, a big, dirty sneaker kicked it down the hall way above me. Above me, Gerald Willis was howling. I was the last one back to the room. I stashed my lunchbox and sat down. A note was waiting for me, from Joey. It said, swings after school. I looked over at him, and I nodded. Well, I hope that you guys liked that book. Um, I think that there will be a lot more tips on how to be a calm kid more as you read. But for now, one um, way that I saw the main characters being, um, how I saw Suds being calm was when he fell off the monkey bars and he hurt his hand and his thumb and his foot and he was in a lot of pain and he said that he was kicking things because he was so angry and in so much pain. But then he saw um, the girl that he had a crush on and holding the door and just seeing her made him feel better. So being nice to her was what made him calm down. So that was one way that I saw him being a calm kid. So if you could pause the video at this moment and everyone could share um, how they think that they could be a calm kid. This could be taking a deep breath, going for a walk, or something like that. And then unpause the video when you're finished. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you to those of you who shared. I'm sure you all had some great ideas on how you can be a calm kid. I do have a little activity that will help us practice being calm kids because, remember, being mindful and being a calm kid does take a lot of practice. So we're going to do an activity together. So first, we are going to think of three things that we can see right now at this moment. So find three things that you can see in the room and then think them in your head. You don't have to say them out loud yet. Okay, and then now we're going to find two things that we can hear and think those in your head as well as, as well as your three things that you can see. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to find one thing that we can touch. So find one thing that you can touch and then think it in your head.
Okay, thank you so much. And now before we share, we're all just going to take one big deep breath together um, because remember, big deep breaths do help calm us down. So we're going to sit up straight. We're going to close our eyes and we're going to take one big deep breath in. Ready, go. And then out. And now we are ready to share. So go ahead and pause the screen and have everyone share the three things they could see, two things they could hear, one thing they could touch, and then unpause when you're finished. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for learning on how to be a, a mindful, calm kid today. I hope that you found some tips and tricks that you like and that you can use because we do need to start practicing that because it does take a lot of practice to be a calm kid. And that is all I have for you today, third graders. Have a great rest of your day and thank you so much.